we have a spoken word expert in the house that his words perpetually inspire people. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together as I invite and welcome Sola Speaks. Please put your hands together for him. I'd like you to put your hands together for yourselves, beautiful boys in the house. I'd actually like you to look to your neighbor, a friend, or someone you've never seen before. Of course, you're all in the same schools. Um, look to somebody you've not really spoken to before and tell them you are lucky. <laughs> okay, okay, I understand that. It's actually for the boys. Um, I said this to say that you are the blessed generation. I understand there are distractions around you. There are so many things to catch your attention. But if we had sessions like this while I was in school, or maybe the kind of school I went to do, if we had sessions like this while I was in school, I know that I would be pretty much better than I am today. And so I'm saying that if you are here today, you are the few privileged. Put your hands together for yourselves, please. Thank you. Standing on the existing protocol, I'd like to say um, a very good morning, this is still morning, to the distinguished ladies and gentlemen in the house. I mean, I can literally mention all of the names here, starting from the um, Dr. Ruby, so to say, it's so nice to see you again, ma. Um, I think we should celebrate the convener of this, this event here, and the person of Mr. Solomon Aydele himself. We celebrate you, sir. We celebrate you, sir, Mr. Amzat. I celebrate every single person, Gaze Baba, um, Pastor, I celebrate you, sir. It's so good to have you this morning. And every other person here, I really cannot mention names, all of the names, Alima and everyone. I'm a spoken word poet, and I just need you to pay attention to this. Tell your neighbor, shh. I'll be telling you a story, something I would say that I broke. I broke from my body. It's a personal story, and I need to pay attention because you probably have experienced it too, and there's a way to it. So listen and it will help you. So my dad once reported to my pastor, this boy is a bastard. Now, he was not surprised because, of course, he knew the son of whom I was. I was there in a poorly lit corner of our four-bedroom flat living room, hands trembling and eyes teary, resembling a poor lost puppies, popping out of my socket as I watched this man, who had once wooed my mom, into muting other men, marrying him and making babies with him. I watched this man try to pull the hair out of my mom's head, hands on her breath, when I pulled that grip and pushed him to the wall, hoping that my mom would have the smallest of strength to catch her breath back into her long sea. If saving your mom's life from the hands of death is what it means to be a bastard, then I think I want my kids to be called sons of a bastard too. Two weeks earlier, 16th of September, 2017, I turned 18. Got chocolates and cupcakes, a short love poem from the girl I called my crush in school. The feeling, the feeling was cool. But that night, I didn't want to close my eyes to sleep because deep within, I was scared of waking up into the first day of being a man. I was scared of turning 18. I was scared that the girl who invited me to feast with her family on Friday night would someday have her face facing my feast. I was scared that the girl who crushed on me would someday be crushed by me, leaning on crutches rather than leaning on me. I was scared that we would move from cracking ribs to breaking our bones. I was scared that the first step to becoming a monster is becoming a man. But the first step to becoming a man is becoming a monster. All the blood-sucking beasts around me had bears, and I was already growing a mustache. I was scared that the bigger your body becomes, the smaller your heart becomes, because you can't take the innocence of a boy into the adolescence of a man. I am innocent, but I am my father's son, and I know the tendency of genetic sickness, so please forgive my weakness. I know someday my dad would see this poem and turn to the next man aside to say, this boy is a bastard. But wherever you are, Dad, I'd like you to know that I love you and I forgive you. Not for the bad things you did, no, or for the good things you couldn't do. Dad, 
27th of January 2002. You had just returned from the state capital with money and food. My mommy was there in the kitchen frying the chicken you had brought and we were gisting with the men on TV when we heard boom and another boom boom. Moments after then, I found my small hands locked in the safety of your grip. My brother was balanced on your back. We were running. Fire was falling from behind. I was calling on my mommy. We were running. Fire for falling from behind. I was falling in love with you, Dad. Because the same hands that formed the fist against my mom's face came back to form the grips that kept our son safe. Dad, I forgive you. Not for the bad things you did, no, but for the good things you couldn't do. Dad, last summer, somehow, I found a passport of my mom in her 30s. She was beautiful, brilliant, the boss lady kind of bold, and you must have been some God-fearing, good-looking, gorgeous guy to have won a heart to a date. So something must have changed your date. Maybe you're not much of a monster. Maybe you're a man kind of star, but the world has taught you never to shine out loud, so you choose to shine in instead. They say it is weakness to shine your teeth, so you choose to shine your eyes instead. But dad, these symptoms don't look good on you. This is not your sickness. I have tasted from your cup of love, dad, your sweetness. The heavens bear me witness. For goodness sake, you paid so much as a bride price. Why should you pay more attention to the world when they try to teach you how to love your wife, how to live your life, dad? I know right now I sound like a four-year-old boy trying to teach his dad three ways to make babies. But I know now though two ways to make babies. But I know one way to make a difference. It is to be different from the world. The world says a man is never allowed to cry in public, except he does it calmly. And no matter how hot you feel, you need help. Just stay cool and collected. That's exactly how to be manly. But sadly, or gladly, even Jesus wept. Even Jesus swept his father's house clean. So explain me how my sister has to be the sweeper and the husband-to-be only has to learn how to sweep her off of her feet. Explain me these things. A man remains the breadwinner of the house, yes. But how does the woman owning the bakery make him a loser? I don't get these things. You see, last Sunday, my dad backed my baby sister to fellowship and the world went like, hmm, maybe he's caring. But if you just do it next Sunday, the world begins his tearing. From the man on the ceiling to the woman on the steering. And it's scary how a man is allowed to carry the whole world on his shoulders. And they call him strong. But when he chooses to carry his own little daughter, they call him wrong or weak or soft. But we need more soft places to use our strength in carrying our daughters, in feeding our sons, in wiping our tears. I'm tired of tears and blood. Tired of wiping my mom's cuts and blood like the woman with the issue of blood. I'd leave you with this word. If we do not allow our boys shed tears when they need be, they would grow into blood-sucking beasts, shedding blood. Believe me. I know someday my dad would see this poem and turn to the next man aside to say, this boy, this boy. Thank you very much, Amsula Speaks. Ladies and gentlemen, that was brilliant. Put your hands together for him. Now, one thing I learned about spoken words is that when the words hit you, right, instead of clapping, you do this. So can you quickly do this with your tooth? With, yeah, can you do that? Yes, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Thank you very much. Can we put our hands together for Swella Speaks? Beautiful.